morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Y'all, I'm already stinky and poopy. Oh, I just, poultry are the nastiest creatures when it comes to rain events. So I had to move the ducklings, I had to move the chicks, and I had to move the partridge because underneath them was just pure mud and poop and really gross. Like, ugh, it stank, y'all. Poultry stink, and when it rains, they're, they're uh, a hot mess. I mean, mixing all that poop and mud all together is the nastiest thing in the world. So, I feel gross already. But I washed my hands. And now I'm going to wash them again with soap, obviously, because I have to do my goat chores now. And I do not want to put any of that nasty stuff near my milk. So I'm gonna wash up and get these girls milked so that they can go outside. They had to stay in yesterday. They were not happy about that and they're ready to go out so they can forage all day long and be happy and play in the sun. Y'all, this is so funny. So at first I thought Kitty was being a brat. But then I realized that she was acting just like a puppy. She was being playful. Do you want to play, kitty? You too, Peanut? Come on, kitty. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> you do. You want to play. You look like a puppy. How funny! Oh my goodness! Silly girls! You're happy to be out of the barn, huh? It feels good to be out, huh? Yes! Yes! She's so funny! Oh my goodness, it's a big girl! Oh, Fluffer Nutter must be done with his food. He's calling me. No, Kitty, that's not your cue to go out. <laughs> that's what she was doing at first. Was kept trying to break out while I was finishing up the other goats. I had her out here. But she was looking at me like challenging like. Like, try to get me. Here you go, Fluffers. Here you go. Where'd you go? You gosh, see this? I have been raking and sweeping hay out of the barn that's loose here and there to try to absorb some of this moisture. This was all mud and I don't want my goat slipping on it so I've been adding the loose hay from the ground. Flavonutter, you told me you were done. You said ma'am. Now come on. Let's go. Go outside with the rest. There's good food to eat out there. Well, the rain has been great for mushrooms. It's also been wonderful for the garden. Those strawberry plants have perked up. The celery's grown three inches. The asparagus has grown a foot. And the beets have grown. But the tomatoes fell over from the rain. So, mommy has to get busy right now with this string and get my tomatoes tied up. We're gonna do the Florida weave. All right, so I've got my roll of twine and I've got my pruners to cut it with when I need to. And to extend my reach, I'm using this PVC. I had a smaller, narrower one that was easier to grasp that I used last year, but I couldn't find it, so I just used this. So my first step is to string it through the PVC and that just gives me a little extra room to tie, to wrap the string around the plants. So I'm going to tie good and tight on the first pole. Alright, so I've got it about a foot up the pole because that's how far up I've already pruned my plants. So now I'm just lifting my plant back up and I'm going to go around the plant and I'm gonna go behind it and in front of the next one 
and then behind the next one and in front of the next one. So in front, behind, in front, behind, weaving them. how important it is to do this before the rain knocks them down. Yeah, this is a lot harder than usual. Oy vey. So I keep my string tight as I go and it will keep the plants up. So once I get this first string done across, I'm gonna do this section with these five plants to that pole and then I'm gonna come across and do it again about six inches higher than that and you'll see how it supports once I have that second string up. Now, if the plants hadn't fallen over, it probably would have stayed nice and supported anyway. But because of the rain, the plants are down on the ground and I sort of should have had this done weeks ago, like I've been saying. <laughs> All right, so I tied it off at the end of the pole and then I tied my next section just above that. And now I'm gonna do the opposite for each plant. So this plant had the rope on that side down there, so I'm gonna have it on this side up here. So I'm gonna run and weave in between the opposite weaving down these five plants. So now you can probably see how supported the plants are becoming and how this would work if I had caught it on time. So I had planned on making a really great video for you guys about um, training tomatoes, but because I'm such a bad example of it, <laughs> because I started so late, um, I'm just I'm just gonna have to do that another time. I apologize. This is the time of year that everybody needs that training, and I have dropped the ball, so I'm apologizing for that. <laughs> Maybe next year I'll have a great video. All right. So I've got this whole row done all the way to the end. As I went, I wove them in between the twine and I trimmed off all the lower leaves again. You see how many more leaves I've trimmed off? This is what you keep doing throughout the growing season. Just keep trimming them off. Now these plants, because they were laying on the ground, you can see they are bent because the sun came out and they started growing towards it and they were laying flat on this side and that was up so I'm gonna let them adjust a couple of days before I add any more line I've done it the next tier on this one up to here but then the rest of the way down is just one one strand of twine and I will train them as I go to get back up into a straight growing position and once they're turned over they should comply so now I'm starting on this section the boys have gone in gone down for a nap with their sister and brother and we are trying to get as much done as we can all right y'all you see what I'm seeing here underneath my tomato plant? Do you recognize that? Do you know what it is? If you've ever grown tomatoes before, you know exactly what that is. And it's right below this. This has been chewed on and eaten by this ugly creature. It's actually kind of beautiful but very ugly in my garden no bad tomato hornworm or tobacco hornworm it might be actually um, but I'm seeing lots of aphids and this guy is the only tomato hornworm I've seen yet so that's good so far we're not too bad off and we will destroy this we'll go to the chickens 
I actually really hate killing tomato hornworms because I love the moth that they become. They are um, a really pretty big moth and they entertain me in the garden. So when they're not caterpillars eating my tomatoes, I like them. But it's not allowed on my plants. Sometimes, um, in years past, I have planted a tomato plant away from all my other tomatoes, and I would actually move the hornworms over to that tomato plant and let them live, but that was back when I was soft. Now I'm hard. I've seen too much damage from those buggers. So, to the chickens it goes. Oh my goodness, y'all. All right. Worked my way down to the end and trimmed and trained all of these. Now my problem is, is I'm out of poles and I don't know when I'm gonna get to the store to get more. So I tried to pick these up off the ground and fold them over the bed so I wouldn't step on them as I went, but that is not a good method. This is what I ended up doing last year and never did stake them and they ended up just being horrible and impossible to harvest or weed and it was not a good crop. So I cannot let that happen guys. I've got to, I've got to get some stakes and get these trained while I can before any fruit sets. Y'all look how good this kale is doing. Look at it, it's huge. It's magnificent. I've never seen such amazing, beautiful kale this time of year, but it is happy. We had a lot of rain and a lot of uh, shady days, so that that helped because there wasn't as much sun. And we've got ladybugs working. There were lots of aphids on the tomatoes, so I'm hoping they'll make their way over there. And we've got cucumbers coming up. Doing well. Some of the corn is doing really good. That's the glass gem corn. And then some of the other smaller ones down there are doing well. But not so much up in here. I'm not having as much luck. Ugh. And I thought I saw some coming up. Yeah, this one's got a little bit coming up. It's got a lot of grass, but there's, there is some corn in there, I can tell. But that one didn't come up at all. And that was my Baker Creek seed that wasn't even old. So I need to contact them. They're really good customer service. They'll replace anything I have issues with. Squash is coming up pretty well. I'm missing a few in a few spots, but getting some here and there. I'll have to go back and oversee where I can. But boy, the weeds are taking over. I'm gonna try to pull some of them now. I think I've done all I can do today. I did get a lot of weeding done behind me, so that's good. But I'm getting tired and my back is hurting from bending over and I'm thirsty. So as the sun begins to set, I know that I have done a good amount of work here in the garden and I can be happy with that, even if I didn't get it all done. I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching today and please like, share, comment down below and if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.